Right, hello folks, just going to attempt to show you how to use um, a feature of ADSB Exchange, ADSB Exchange that I've only just heard of myself just a few days ago. So normally when you're on ADSB Exchange, you'll have that website in your um, browser, globe.adsbexchange.com. That's the main website to go to. Once you're on there, obviously you can move the map to wherever you want. Let's, let's think of a random place. Let's think of um, Rome, Italy. So using your mouse you just grab the screen and drag wherever you want to go to I'm just going to show you okay so then you've moved the map to roughly Italy now try and find Rome on here where are we looking there we go found it so there's Rome let's just say for example you wanted to see what was closest to Rome I'd say probably that plane there and you click on a plane and off to the side it shows you the registration of the plane what type of plane what height is that, what speed, blah, blah, blah. So you, I'm sure all of you know that, but I'm doing that for any of you that don't know. Now, for example, for me, I'm interested in what happens in East Anglia mostly, because that's where I live. Now today, um, a Hercules plane took off from Cambridge to go out on a flight test. Um, I want to use, so what I want to show you is, imagine if you could play this back like you can on Flight Radar 24, which is a rival website, and just so you, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, um, Flight Radar 24 is flightradar24.com. Okay, and it's a completely rival website, nothing to do with ADS Exchange, but it does exactly the same thing. It shows you where planes are on a map laid out like a radar screen. It's not actually using radar to find out where the planes are, um, but it displays them like a radar, hence the name radar in the time. So, on Flight Radar 24, if you want to use the playback feature, you simply go down, click on playback. I'll show you now quickly. If I can find that. There you go. So click on playback. Then it gives you a calendar. So you choose whichever date you want to go. And let's just, just to show you, today's the 1st of August. I don't think they let you go back very far. So use the back button there to go back to July. Yeah, and you can see. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They only let you go back eight days in total. If you wanted to find out what happened on the 24th of July, you couldn't, unless you paid for a, a different level of subscription. On the free service, you can only go back eight days, okay? Um, and then you would choose the time and date. Now, this is where it gets confusing. Um, it's currently in, in Britain, England, it's 5.49 p.m. But UTC um, is 4.49, so an hour behind. And when you use playback, they show you in UTC. So let's say you saw a plane right now at 5.50 p.m. to the west of Cambridge. When you wanted to use the playback feature, the time you would put into the playback feature would be 4.50 UTC. So you've got to remember to do that or else everything becomes chaos. You start looking at the map for ages and wondering why you can't see the plane. It's because you, you've put in the wrong time. So remember that right now. To show you how to do a similar sort of thing on um, ADSB Exchange. What you want to do, oh, hold on. I'm just gonna, ugh, just need to edit something out of the URL. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, so, let's just try and do this. Oh, it's gonna drive me mad. I'm gonna have to put this down, I need both hands. That's what's going wrong. Very annoying when things don't go right when you're trying to demonstrate them to people, but it happens. So I'm just going to try, there we go. Oh, okay. Let me do what I want to do, which is typical when attempting to do a demonstration, but you want to try and bookmark globe.adsbexchange.com forward slash question mark and then replay. And then if you can get that to bookmark perfect, um, Otherwise, at the end of replay, you put equals and then type in the date you want. So in this case, 1st of August 2023 would be like that. What I was trying to do, I'm trying to remove part of that from the URL. And it wasn't letting me, it was just kind of defaulting. So let's just see if I can, right, I've done it now, okay. So that's what I want. I'm going to click enter on my screen. Yeah, and then it automatically adds the, the location. It's already started playing stuff back um, 
for some reason it's on 30 times zoom. So you can change how quickly it plays stuff back. Slowest speed you can do is one time zoom, which is obviously going to be extremely slow. And at the highest point, I think the other day I got to about 200 times. Yeah, you can do it at 228 times zoom, but I have to say, when I was trying to use this the other day, it was going extremely slowly. It wasn't working correctly, I'm sure. So once you're on that replay part of ADS-B Exchange, if you can get it to work, down here, you've got the similar thing as Flight Radio 1. You've got a calendar, so you can select whichever date you want. And again, they give you a calendar. Let's just see how many days back they allow you to go. Let's see if I could do 1st of July. Yes, I could. Okay, brilliant. So they do far further back than... Um, it's not letting me... Let's just see if I can do 06. 06 01. Let's see if I can do June. I've pressed enter and it's not allowing me to do it. So I guess it can go back one month. So it's allowing me to do as far back as the 1st of July. So that, that's one thing I found out today. Yeah, it'll let me go back one month. Okay, so I'm not going to do that now. Today I want the 8th. So, go, so type it in on your keyboard. Click enter. Okay. And then... Let me just look, I need to look at what time this plane was that I saw today, so that I can show you what I want to do. So, yeah, 11.58 a.m. an Indian Air Force plane took off from Cambridge. So I want to go back to 11.58 a.m. on today's date. So, what you've got, you've got these blue sliding things which give you the time. So, click on the blue button and slide it to the left to go down in time. Now remember, 11.58 would be 10.58, um, I presume, on this. And what happens is when it doesn't seem to allow you to go exactly where you want, you kind of drag it and it goes in increments. You see, it's very hard for me to get exactly where I want this, this to go. It won't let me. You can't kind of move it like one or two minutes at a time. It just kind of goes in chunks. See, that's too much. So then you've got this second lower down blue thing so drag this one and that seems to allow you to move in minutes so if I keep dragging that what did I say I wanted to get to uh, 1058 wasn't it and that lets you do the small movements okay that's got me to 11 that'll do so now I'm gonna click the moments on pause so I click on that and that should go to play okay so play let's have a look at what goes on on the map now as I said, this was very slow um, when I tried to use it the other day. Come on. You can still zoom in on the map if you want, but if you do that, I found that sometimes it causes the, the entire procedure of attempting to play back something to go even slower, because they've then got to kind of reload the map. Um, let's just check they've got the right date there. 1st of August, yes. Oh. And see, and when it says loading, <laughs> nothing happens. And so it's a very slow procedure I've found to use the playback feature on um, ADSP Exchange. But the, the reason I'm showing you this is because ADSP Exchange shows you a lot more military planes than Flight Radar 24 does. Flight Radar 24 does show you some military stuff. That, oh, there we, go, there we go, there we go. I think that's the one I'm looking for. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. All right, let's get this to play. Come on. Ah, oh, that's it. That's the one. Okay, I know that from the hex code. Okay, so MCE is a Marshall's Airport call sign when it's a test flight. That's the Indian Air Force plane that took off. So now I'm using the playback feature. Brilliant. Okay, they've incorrectly labeled it as United States. It's not. That is an Indian Air Force C-130J that took off at roughly 11.58 a.m. 1st of August, going out on a flight test um, over Norfolk. Now, at the moment, we're going forward at 1.2 times speed. That's too slow. I just want to see what happened on this test flight. So let's move this slider for the speed, which is down the bottom right. Let's move it faster. Three times is not much. Uh, let's go to 15. Let's go more. 25 times zoom. Now it's moving. Okay. And now I'm just going to see if I can still do... If you click on I over here for isolate. Yeah, there you go. That gets rid of all the other planes on the screen. I only want to know what happened to this plane here. Okay. For example, on this demonstration so it's gone up over Swatham 
and it's going to fart around on a test flight, testing things out on the plane, check them they work, check the engines work, etc. etc. So again, this is still not fast enough for me because I know this is going to be a couple of hour test flight. So move that slider for the speed again. Let's move it 40 times, 60 times. Let's go even faster. Once you get to 100 times zoom, well, it won't let me. It's off the screen. I can't do any more. So 100 times zoom. So now what I'm going to do, click on the arrow up there that gives you the information coming out the side. And then once you move it out the side, then you can see the rest of this sliding bar. No, excuse me, my screen seems to be very dusty. <laughs> um, and then, so it's probably a coding error, the fact that they've made this feature not show up unless you do that clicking that arrow up there to poke that out. So there you go. So now you're doing 100 times zoom. Look at the speed the plane's going backwards and forwards on its test flight. And just like the uh, normal ADS-B exchange, the color represents the height the plane is flying at. You can also obviously look at the side to see. So it's at 20,000 feet. It tells you the speed it's doing. Uh, track is obviously the direction it's flying in. So 283 degrees, blah, blah, blah. So that's what you can do to watch. And now look, that seems to have now paused. And that's what I noticed when I was using this the other day. It's, it seems to be able to play back a little bit of a flight and then it stops doing anything for a while. And it gets quite annoying. Then it starts again. So it's not perfect. Again, it stopped. The plane didn't actually stop when it was doing this test flight. So um, you get the idea. It can really be a pain to use this. I'm just going to move the map a bit down so it's easier for me to hold the camera order level. Right, so 99 times zoom, that's still not enough for me. I wanted to go faster, so move it more. Let's go right to the full. So two, oh, I didn't know it went quite that much. 244 times zoom. Hurry up. Now I realize this is going to end up being a long demonstration, but I don't care. It just saves me having to keep explaining the same thing to lots of people. I'm just going to upload this video once um, onto the Facebook group I run, and that's for you lot to watch and use this and understand how to use it. If you figure out anything else on how to use this playback feature that I haven't mentioned, leave a comment underneath this uh, video that's on the Facebook group uh, to help other people. But I've just wanted to demonstrate to you that there is a playback feature now on ADSB Exchange. I don't know how long it's been there. I just happened to find out about it uh, randomly from Reddit, I think it was. Someone mentioned it on Reddit. Um, but as I said, the fact that you can now work out what you've seen. So again, to give you another demonstration, let's say you're driving in your car somewhere and you see a military plane Obviously, you're not supposed to be using your phone when you're when you're driving. So you might mentally know where you were. You can say, "I was, I saw a plane going over me at Thetford at say 11:20 a.m. 31st of July." All you then got to do is come back and use this ADSB ADSB exchange feature. Use the date and time using those sliders, and then you can work out what it was instead of just posting a message on the group and saying. Does anybody know what flew over Thetford at 11.20? Look it up yourself. <laughs> Do some work yourself. I'm so fed up with how many people can be so lazy and not willing to work out anything themselves. Constantly asking the same questions again and again and again. Do a bit of work, put in a little bit of effort, and you can find out what you saw. Now, again, there's no way that is 244. I've got it set at 244 times zoom. There's no way that's 244 times zoom. Uh, 244 times speed. It'll be going faster than that, so... I don't trust that this is doing what it says it's doing. That's more like, I don't know, 30, 40 times speed, I would say. There's no way that's 244 times speed. So, as you can see, even using these settings doesn't seem to work at the moment. Hopefully they'll improve this. I'm gonna drop this down because I don't trust that that's right. Let's move the slider. Let's go to, see if I can move it. See, it's not even letting me click on that at the moment. Drives you mad sometimes, all these features. Oh, there you go. Page unresponsive. Okay. I'll give it one more try, and then just for the sake of this video getting too long. No, at the moment, it's not allowing me to even do anything. Oh, there we go. It's just finally started to work again. So it's gone down to nearly 100 times zoom. So again, if you really wanted to watch like the entire flight of a plane, <laughs> it can take you quite a while. Let's say the plane that I was filming took off in Cambridge and it went to America, an eight hour flight. Using this playback feature, God knows, it might take you half an hour to get to watch that flight because of how slowly everything seems to work at the moment. Um, so it's not perfect, but in fact, I'd say to you, 
use flight radar 24 playback feature first see if the plane appears on that use flight radar 24's playback feature if the plane you saw doesn't show up on flight radar 24 then try using ASB exchange um, and as I said this this is much better for military flights and just to prove um, well I'm going to get off this I'm going to go I've got another browser tab open I'm going to go to ADSB exchange now oh hang on and just I'll say that we've got that about to land at Mildenhall aha uh -huh. okay KC-10 not a DC-10 as they got it's a KC-10 if it's a military tanker that's about to land at Mildenhall so what I was going to do was if you click on the U on the screen up there that gets rid of all the civilian planes and it just shows up where military planes are and then if I zoom out just to show you um, so some of these planes will show up on flight area 24 some won't and then if you zoom right out you can see what's all over Europe they don't really have much coverage of Russia occasionally a Russian plane will show up Africa's pretty much empty but America is the real gold mine that is quite extraordinary how much stuff is flying in America at any one time so again use ADSB exchange as you wish uh, the playback feature is brilliant for you to be able to work out what a plane is you saw if you know where you were and when and for now I'm going to leave it at that so um, if you do if you do see something interesting obviously post a, a screenshot to the group and if you don't know how to do a screenshot which is what drives me mad. I don't understand how people can use computers and not know how to do that. Let me just try it. Okay, so on Windows 10, you have a thing called the snipping tool. The icon for that looks like that. It's literally scissors, hence snipping tool. Okay. Um, I've got mine pinned down here at the moment. You might have to look in your computer to find it, but basically, um, once you've opened the tool, you click on new, if I can get my mouse to show in the right place, right, new, click on where it says new, and then you get this little toolbox opens here, okay, and your screen will go kind of a pale colour, and then wherever you move your mouse is going to be the top left of whichever snip you want to take, so a snip is basically you're going to, it's like taking a photo of your computer screen, so I want to show you what's happening in most of Europe at the moment, so I'm going to click there, oh sorry, I have to click new again, Click new, right, yeah, and as you click, you drag at the same time. So I'm dragging, and as I drag, where the mouse is, it's dragging and making the screen go in colour. So that's how you choose what, what you want to capture in your snip. It's essentially, it's like taking a photographic screen. So do that, and then let go when you've got what you want, the area you want, I want that area, okay? So you've now taken that picture, and then what you do is you click up there, that, and you click save snip, and then you save it into whatever folder you want. So you might have a folder on your computer called aviation pictures, for example. Okay, and just for some of you that don't know what you're doing, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Let me just check something. Yeah, okay, I can do that. So, let me just click. Right, so just wanted to check that folder was existing on my computer. So I'm going to click on click on that, which is supposed to be like a floppy disk image, I guess, as in say. So save, and then it'll open up your computer and it'll open up whatever hard drives you've got. I've got more than one hard drive attached to my computer at the moment. I'm going to save it on my F drive in a folder that I've already made called Aviation Picks. You can obviously make a folder if you haven't got it in there. You can get an idea of other pictures I've saved recently, and then. The file name, obviously name it. Um, so type in there, I'm just gonna put test. Oops. Test, and then always put the time and date. So 1 August 23, it's currently 6.06 p.m. Oops. Okay, so you've labeled whatever that picture is, and then you click on save. And then that screenshot you've just taken, if I can get the mouse in the right place. That screenshot is now saved on my computer in that folder, so I know where it is. Once you've got that, you can then go onto the um, Facebook group, which I'm going to do now, just to show you how to do everything. Uh, hold on a minute. So now I need to open up another browser window. 
and you should have this bookmarked if you're using this group you should have it so that you can find it anyway so this is the group I'm talking about obviously that's it and that is the RF Mildenhall Lake and Ethan Military Fans group then when you want to post something like a video you click on photos and videos I'm just going to pan away for a sec so you've clicked on photos and videos right then this opens up and it says add photos or videos so you click on that and then it'll open up your computer folders um, and then you've got to choose where you want to get it from so I want to get it from my F drive and then I want to open up my so I need to cover up Well, anyway, you then look through all the folders on your computer. I don't want you to show, show you all my camcorder video footage folders because they've got names of places I film wildlife and stuff. That is private. So click on the folder that says Aviation Picks. So you've gone from your F drive to Aviation Picks. And then choose the one that you've just saved. Now, it was 1 of August. Oh, test 1 of August. So find, find the picture. Click on the picture you want to share to the group. Okay, that then selects it down the bottom. And then click on open that then shows there and then write something uh, so I'll put test and then 1 August 23 and then the time was 606 when I took it okay right obviously write more descriptions say you know I saw a plane about to land at Milden Hall it was a KC 10 here's a picture of it whatever and then obviously credit write down credit and credit whatever website you've used so in this case ADSB exchange I'd put ADSB EX dot dot as an abbreviation and then you click post and then that would go onto the group for everybody else to see I'm not going to post it now because that's just a test but you get the idea that's how to do it that's how to take a screenshot that's how to save it to your computer and that's how to upload it to the group and this is also the same method you'd use to upload your own photos or videos that you've got on your computer to the group. Um, so let me just get rid of that. I'm going to click on the X to get rid of that. Hopefully I didn't post that. Nope. Good. So let's go back. Um, anything else I need to tell you? Now, is there anybody that doesn't understand how to create a folder on their computer? There probably is. Um... Oh, I'm very quickly going to show you how to do that, but I don't really want to do anything more than that today. So, open up um, this PC on your computer to get to your different hard drives. For example, I've got about three hard drives in use at the moment. Select whichever hard drive you want to uh, create a folder on. I'm going to select my F drive for the moment. Um, Okay, and then that will give you a list. Oh, and that's the whole point. I don't want to be showing all my folders of wildlife. Um, that's the difficulty of trying to demonstrate stuff like this to people. Let me just try. I know what I can do. I know what I can do. <laughs> okay, right. I've just dragged, because you've got these different options up the top. I've dragged one across so it covers up. See, CamC vids is where I put all the different camcorder videos I record of wildlife. So, where you've got a bit of blank space to the side of all the folders on your on your drive, uh, you left click, and then where it says new, go across and click on folder. Uh, that would be left click on folder, and then it'll say new folder. Use the backspace on your um, keyboard to get rid of that, and then give it a name. So whatever folder you want so as I said um, for example you might want to put aviation photos and that's it okay and then once you've done that click somewhere where there's space at the side that then makes that folder um, be formed on your computer you've now got a new folder on your computer so F aviation photos and that would be where you then put your aviation photos so if you go out and you film stuff, take your SD card out of your camcorder or camera, stick that into your 
computer, maybe using something like a little USB um, stick like this. The SD card slots into there and then that slots into your computer. And that's how you get the, the photos off your computer. There you go. I hope all that's been of use to you. Um, leave a comment if that's helpful to you. And I'm going to stop talking now. That's a lot of information for you to take in. But that's how to use the playback feature of Alias Exchange. That's how to use a snipping tool. Um, and that's how to create a folder. Right, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.